coming up, vaccines are going like hotcakes at UIHC. And later, NCAA champions bring fans back to the stadium. Welcome to DITV Now, your flash update on all the biggest headlines coming out of the Daily Iowa Newsroom. I'm Michael Merritt. And I'm Katie Wadman. People are saying scheduling a COVID-19 vaccine appointment is harder than getting a date with the Pope. While other parts of the country are experiencing difficulties scheduling their second dose, Iowa City hasn't run into this problem. We would love to be able to have as many doses as we could get and distribute them uh, as freely as we could. We're not there yet in the uh, numbers of vaccine doses that we have in the country. We always have vaccines distributed within the week that we get them, usually within days. UIHC is now scheduling vaccine appointments ahead of time to anticipate the vaccine shortage. No, actually it was very easy because as soon as I got my first dose, there was like a front desk counter that asked me when I wanted to schedule my second dose and they basically did everything for me. Speaking of University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Michael, how are things there? Katie, things are looking up for university hospitals and clinics. The COVID surge plan that has been in place since November 2020 is slowly going away. The surge plan helped regional hospitals deal with the overwhelming numbers of COVID-19 patients, especially from outside the hospital's home base. A majority of UIHC's COVID-19 patients come from outside Johnson County. Since vaccines have rolled out across Iowa, the surge plan isn't fully necessary anymore. COVID-19 positivity rates in Johnson County and across the state have continued to trend downward. Hospitalizations are down and availability of ICU beds has stabilized. UIHC is the destination for many needing long-term care. As a result, it's unlikely the number of COVID-19 patients will likely stay the same despite statewide and national numbers decreasing. Even through the next year, when COVID is mostly disappearing, it won't be disappearing at UI hospitals and clinics. We will continue to retain the sick, sick of the sickest and the long haulers. In about two months, UIHC has given hundreds of thousands of COVID-19 vaccine doses. Today, we are vaccinating over 2,000 patients um, at our HSSB facility in Coralville today, which is, is quite a feat. The recipients have been UIHC employees and community members. 6,500 patients and over 1,200 teachers in Johnson County have received the vaccine. These numbers are growing as fast as doses can be supplied. February is Black History Month. DITV sports reporter Mallory Wilson says UI Athletic Department is focusing on change. February is Black History Month, a month to celebrate and recognize the black community and their contributions to America. Black History Month is a time for education. I think it's a month of trying to educate myself, and even though I am a, a young, black, educated man, there's a lot of things that I don't know. The University of Iowa Athletic Department has taken strides to ensure equality for student-athletes. African-American kids seeing like that their support behind them gives them pride and gives them that sense of confidence that they can, you know, they can do these things. Being educated on black history is essential to understanding the history of America. The fight for racial equality is an ongoing process. Every day there is an opportunity to educate ourselves and spread awareness. Although a lot of progress has been made, there is still improvement needed to ensure equality in the athletic department, at the University of Iowa, and in the United States as a whole. The progress that needs to be made within the athletic department is not independent to the athletic department. I think it's more societal. I think it's just understanding each other, understanding the differences with one another and celebrating those differences. Although the month of February comes to an end, the celebration of black history doesn't. Black history is American history. It shouldn't be confined to a month. I think right. it, it's part of our history as like a nation. So I think that it, it should be, you know, integrated into regular history. From Iowa City, this is Mallory Wilson, DITV Sports. This year, the men's basketball tournament will be like no other. The NCAA has decided to stage the entire men's basketball championships in Indianapolis, Indiana. The NCAA will also allow a limited amount of fans into the arena. All attendees must follow COVID-19 guidelines, but that's not dampening fans' excitement. I am locked and loaded. I'm going to work remotely. Uh, I'm going to leave... Uh and go to Indianapolis on the 9th, and I'm going to stay in Indianapolis as long as the Hawkeyes are there. 
Hawkeye Elvis believes having the tournament in just one place has its perks. Pretty good idea, you know, centrally located tournament like this, the costs are going to be so reduced for travel and things like that. It may, may have some schools, it may have the NCAA going, oh, hey, wait a second, maybe this isn't such a bad idea after all. The tournament starts on Wednesday, March 10th, and be sure to look for Hawkeye Elvis in the stands. Speaking of March Madness, Michael has what this upcoming stretch means for our Hawkeyes. Thanks, Katie. Tonight starts off the toughest two-game road stretch the Hawkeyes have had all year, as they will take on the number three Michigan Wolverines. The Hawks follow that up with a trip to Columbus to take on the number four ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Just a great opportunity for us to be able to show what we're capable of. Um, we thought we had Ohio State. Um, at home and we let that slip away so we get another chance to them on Sunday and then we play Michigan one of the top teams in the entire country um, and we're kind of fighting for them for a spot that we believe that we're, we still deserve a one seed. If Iowa gets two wins this would cement the Hawkeyes place as one of the top teams in the country. This also would give the Hawks the most ranked wins in the nation. On Iowa and go Hawks! In a pandemic, the show must go on, and the University of Iowa 10-Minute Play Festival is still happening this year. The 10-Minute Play Festival showcases six student-produced plays. The shows will be available through the UI's Theater Arts YouTube and website on February 27th. I just wish, as we all do, probably that oh, we could be in person. All the plays are being performed on Zoom. While rehearsing a play online can be difficult, some plays are using this new platform to make some really fun and creative shows. The biggest difference is we're not getting to come together and put it on the stage. Some plays are even movie-like and are giving both the actors and directors a chance to learn something new. It's, it's like you're rehearsing a play just by yourself in front of your computer. The 10-Minute Play Festival has been an opportunity for undergraduate students to write, direct, and put on their own works, and this year is no different. All that is left for these thespians is for them to take a virtual bow. Today, you can expect sunshine in the morning and more clouds later in the day. Today's high will reach 37 degrees and temps will dip down to a low of 24 degrees. Thanks for tuning in to DITV Now. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest on the University of Iowa, Iowa City, and Hawkeye Nation. From Iowa City, I'm Katie Wadman. And I'm Michael Merrick. Have a great day.